Hi guys, my name is Thomas Trasmontero. I'll be doing my tech talk on Phaser IO, which is a game framework. Um, do a basic uh, dive on what Phaser IO is. So, let's see. So, what is Phaser IO? Phaser IO is an um, open source HTML 2D, 3D game engine framework from Poland Storm. You can basically build any 2D models, and you know, if you have an idea for a game, it's really the best way to. Uh, created is using this framework because it uses some um, up-to-date uh, uses update browsers, um, has uh, native apps and desktops, and uh, create mobile games for it. And why is it ideal framework? To look at it, the key feature um, since we use JavaScript and we learn it already, we can do it for this framework. Don't need to learn any new um, language for it. it has a built-in physics engine. You don't need to, um, if you have any fancy um, uh, way of showing how to do, um, how to create um, tables, how, to, how they move and everything, you could easily replace it. Also supports WebGL and Canvas, so it supports any of the Chrome, uh, any uh, advanced browsers in there, and also uh, mobile browsers. Uh, also has a built-in web audio, so you don't have to have um, it could wrap around uh, the audio, so you could do the, like different channels for um, your program and your games. Has import support for multi-touch keyboard. You can play with the iPad and your phone. Um, takes it in. It just basically creates a wrapper and has the basic functions of the game without giving you into the deep diving in all the um, crazy uh, code behind it. And if you really need to create your own task for it. There's also a plugin system where you create your own custom made um, uh, plugins task on how you want it. So it's easy to update based on your games. Uh, basically this is the basics for what the game is. You create the instantiation of the game. Phase your game new. The 800, 600 basically tells you how big the game screen will be. Uh, Phaser Auto basically looks at the browser or the mobile uh, applications you have and looks up what um, view engine is going to load. Uh, the basic three things is the preload, which loads the assets, all your environments, um, the, the pictures, um, see all your sprites. Uh, the function create will create those games, will take those assets and place it inside the game so you can build your levels how you want it. Um, Put the pictures in there and how they're um, how they'll move, how they'll react to each other, and the function updates will run each time every couple milliseconds and check that's if the game is um, if you're moving, if you're moving against the wall, it's gonna stop you. Basic all the game logic will go to the update and it'll check every time every couple milliseconds if everything is um, functioning. So I'll give a quick example. This is basically much a sprite of the game. It shows, uh, I guess, you need anybody familiar with uh, who the dog is? <laughs> yes. So basically, it just takes the frame by frame of this dog and cuts it up into each frame. And it loads it up into the game. Now, the create function will take that asset and basically loads the environment of the game. So it takes all those frames and put in as a one frame, but you could also do um, make it move. Uh, it's not you can't move it here, but it basically that's what it does. Makes it move, has all the objects and all the properties built into it. And the game, uh, the update function, when you add the logic in there, that's when everything moves. That's where everything interacts. That's when everything's begin to get fun. All right. Basically, once you put everything together, you get the finished product. That's where the game goes. Um, let's see, next one. I'm gonna do a short demo and a quick game. Pretty basic. I'll show you how quickly it is. Just go here. Okay. So basically, this is the main HTML. Uh, let's see if we can make it bigger. It's pretty basic. Everyone's familiar with HTML5. Uh, all I did was put in the script for the uh, phaser. 
this is my uh, script, the JavaScript code here, and basically just put the ID as phaser, which the name uh, I will give the, the game to. So if you go the chunk of the game, we'll be here. All right. So in here, pretty much instantiate the game, create a 16 by 580 uh, game space for us. Um, that would look like this. So it's going by pixels. There's nothing there yet. Uh, the first thing we do is uh, load all the assets. Well, first I, I would load the background. We're loading the, bio, uh, the tile map and the image. So all the image actually looks like this. It's all blank screen. And the tile map usually just creates um, a method where you want to put these each tile to where it looks like in their level. And basically, looks like that. The data here basically tells the computer where each of those tile maps will be placed. Go down. We're going to load the tile map. Put everything uh, and see what it looks like. You can't see it here, but you can see the borders are in there to the sides, the white lines. Pretty basic so far. The next up, we could load uh, the background. Uh, the background here. I got the foreground here, and I got the background. Here, so when I put them together, when you create the, um, all these assets, you got to make sure that the first one will be, be um, the first one will be behind. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, the first one will be the the last one on the background. So anything you create after that will be moved to the front. Right, so let me instantiate the trees. So basically loaded the sprite in here. I'll give them the location. It'll be 100 pixels down. 1500 will be the size of our map to match what the map is um, to match our level. And we'll see what it looks like. Pretty nice. You got the clouds there. And you got the basic, uh, you know, the the hunt stage everyone familiar with. Um, I guess it would be great if you could move that sky. Um, you could do the update here. Which basically grabs the background and moves it about 0.3 um, pixels every couple of milliseconds to make it look like it's moving. Now you see, it's moving to the left. Next up, we'll load in sprites. Uh, let's see. Mm. All right, so this is a basic sprite layout. When uh, phaser, when you load this to phaser, it basically looks at this sheet, and you tell it how big um, this individual sprite is. So we're only going to give phaser the size of this first um, module right here, first guy. Then we'll tell phaser that this sprite sheet will have 18 um, frames on it, right? There's five here, five here, five here, and there's three frames. So we tell phaser we're only looking for the size, the sprite of this size but it's going to have 18 frames. So phaser will look at the next one to the right, next one to the right. Once it goes to the end, it's going to go down 18 times. It loads it uh, into the browser. So that's what we're going to do here. Mm. All right, load it. Here's our guy. Is just standing there, no motion whatsoever. I think the next thing we do 
Let's try to make it move a little bit. Let's see. Here, it's basically we're adding instantiating the player object, which is the mummy. We're adding um, a walk. I guess we'll call it a walk to this animation. Um, there's also a parameter here which tells you how many frames you could put in. But since if you lift the um, leave out the parameter, it's going to read all through the 18 frames of that sprite sheet. And here we call that move function. He walks uh, 30 frames per second, and after that frame is done. It's going to loop again, which is true. You also instantiate the basic uh, physics on that guy, where he is, and put a gravity on him. Um, so actually, it's, if I take this out, you'll see a better way. You see it. So it's kind of moving, passing all the frames. Once that's the frame, it loops back again. Uh, if I recomment out the physics for this guy, He'll drop down because you put the gravity on there. Now the last thing to do is actually try to make them bigger. We actually scale them up. So we put in four. The original sprite sheet will be scale, uh, scaled up four times. And you'll see it. It's pretty big. It's going up. Uh, next thing you do is probably put a control. It's pretty easy. Uh, it's basically checking what uh, button you're holding. So if you're putting left, it's going to go left. It's going to go, uh, if you press right, it's going to go right. You can see, you can make a move. Uh, the jump function is pretty interesting. Uh, every time you press up, he's going to change his velocity. So you have to put a timer on it. Because if you keep pressing up, he's just going to keep moving up and flying. Uh, but basically, that's um, basic game layout. You got everything you need. You could add more uh, players there. You could add more enemies. But uh, yeah, whenever you think of a game you want to try out, try, uh, uh, try this framework out. Thank you.